The recovery of oil and gas is taking us to more and more demanding environments, just like this. In such places, corrosion can be a real issue. The problem for us is that we may have 20, 30 kilometre pipeline, but the corrosion happens in one small area. And what we really need to understand is what causes that corrosion. And so while on a large scale we see the corrosion, what we really want to know is what is causing that. And to help us do that, we need to go down in scale, uh, in stepwise, until we get right down to the molecular and atomic level to try and understand the fundamental science behind what's causing it. In the past, we've had to study corrosion phenomenologically. Now we have a suite of tools that enable us to study it forensically at a range of scales. In order to study the corrosion processes taking place in the flange, we need to take a journey, travelling down the different scales and understanding each process as we go. Imagine the flange to be the size of the Earth. To understand the corrosion processes, we must first zoom in a thousand times to the millimetre scale. By analogy, that takes our view of the Earth to a view of the city of Manchester. Corrosion takes place across the surface as a general corrosion at the millimetre scale, but it also occurs at sub-millimetre level, um, which we refer to as localised corrosion. And it's this localised corrosion that is much more insidious and leads to other damaged processes, such as cracking. We have a selection of techniques that we can use, but to spatially resolve um, corrosion, we use electrochemical scanning techniques, where we scan a probe across the surface and monitor at selected sites corrosion activity. The corrosion activity that, uh, that we see results from the metal dissolution at predetermined sites, often um, inclusions or grain boundaries. The metal dissolves, it goes into solution. The pH at those sites often decreases, so we get much more acidic solutions. And there is a corresponding cathodic reaction taking place, such as oxygen reduction. And the oxygen is reduced to hydroxide. The iron ions react with the hydroxide ions to form what we commonly refer to as rust. So now that we've scanned the surface, at the submillimeter level. We need to look more closely at the pit that can lead to cracking at the micron level. In the next step of our journey, we go 100 times closer to the 10 micron scale. This is equivalent to moving to the square in which the ICAM building is located. By using X-ray computer tomography, we can look actually uh, non-destructively at the nucleation of uh, local corrosion sites. Uh, here in our case, uh, we can look at pitting corrosion and we can identify different corrosion mechanisms. I'm using X-ray computer tomography to actually take two-dimensional radiographs of a sample and then we rotate the sample and we take uh, a range of projections at different angles and then we take those projections and use a computer to uh, generate a reconstructed three-dimensional image of uh, the, the sample and then we can do this actually non-destructively over uh, different time periods and can look at, at uh, different stages of for example corrosion or cracking. Now we have three-dimensional images of the pit nucleation site in a transition to intergranular corrosion and we then need to use electron microscopy techniques to look at higher resolution at those sites. In the next step, we move in another 100 times to the 100 nanometer scale. That's equivalent to this shot of me here. The key scale is 10 to 100 nanometer in scanning electron microscopy for us to be able to look at the grain boundaries uh, in the microstructure which are involved in this corrosion activity. We use a focused ion beam uh, to use the ions to eject atoms from the sample surface uh, and cut the sample in nanometer resolution slices, successive slices, and we use these successive slices to compile them uh, to make a 3D reconstruction. The 3D reconstruction allows us to see the microstructure in context with the corrosion and see which boundaries are corroding and which boundaries aren't uh, to give us an idea of the corrosion activity. With the scanning electron microscopy, we've looked at the microstructure in, at grain level 
And in order to go a level deeper into the atomic level, we take now one of the slices and look at it in transmission electron microscope. So overall, that's equivalent to zooming from the Earth right down to this grain of sand. The scale that we're looking at is really at the atomic level. So we're able to zoom in and see single individual atoms, as well as to analyse nanoscale regions of material to understand what the elements we have are present. So the scanning transmission electron microscope works by firing a beam of high-speed electrons all the way through a very thin sample, and we detect the electrons that have passed through the material. So using the slice that we've extracted in the fib, we're able to look in the transmission electron microscope at a grain boundary that is ahead of the preceding corrosion path. We're able to look on either side of that grain boundary and to understand how the atomic structure on either side determines the structure of the grain boundary. And we're also able to analyse at a very local level, just at the nano scale, the types of elements that might be segregated or depleted along that grain boundary. So where does this atomic scale knowledge of corrosion processes take us? It enables us to design new materials from the atomic scale up to the macro scale. At Cambridge, we have a team who are using computer modelling to design the materials for tomorrow. New steels with precipitates engineered to trap harmful elements and to render them harmless, and therefore to lead to corrosion-resistant steels. A key aspect in the computer-aided design of these new materials is to ensure that they are both manufacturable and will have an assured life. These components will work at high pressures and high temperatures under demanding environments for long periods of time. And so we have to ensure that they are fit for purpose. So we have seen how you can forensically peel away the different length scales to better understand the corrosion that takes place in the materials of today and to provide a basis for a whole new breed of materials for tomorrow. <laughs>